All right, welcome to another uh, Conversion Lab uh, for the 2nd of uh, September. And today we're talking about uh, hacking market segmentation. So market segmentation when you don't want to do market segmentation. So those of you in, in Persuasion uh, SOS course, this would be like the uh, rough uh, version or the uh, or the or the or the uh, uh, or the sort of the the the, the, the broke market is market segmentation, not the stuff we were working on. All right, that's uh, that 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 is the preferred approach. This is if you really short for time. It's a new market, a new vertical. You don't quite know uh, what to do. This is the three things that you want to start with. But before I do that, let me preface that with a, a presentation that I did. Uh, this is some years ago now, where I. Um, spoke about basically uh, where the bloody hell are you. It was uh, an ad that was uh, run by uh, uh, by the Queensland government for tourism to people to to visit uh, Queensland for holidays. And they had a model who would uh, walk on an empty beach and she said, where the bloody hell are you? Right. And that's uh, so I sort of use that as a uh, as, as a bit of a phrase to sort of work out that our job as marketers is, is to essentially work out where the bloody hell are you, as in where is the market at in terms of the actual continuum. So this is a very early version of the continuum that I created. So essentially you have a problem, you don't know the problem, you don't believe the problem, or you kind of accept the problem. Then only after that stage, in real life, obviously these stages aren't quite as discreetly separated as, as I'm putting it out here, but a, a way to kind of think about it. Next thing is, uh, is there a solution possible? I don't know, uh, I don't believe, or I accept. And then you essentially search for solutions and then you consider them. So you don't believe you accept the the, uh, the 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 actual product itself. Sorry, that's the solution phase, product phase. And then you go through the buying experience phase and then comes the user experience part. And then whether you're gonna continue to use it or dump it or whatever. So I was including a lot of the B2B side of this. Obviously if you're B2C, if you're e-com or something, then, the, then these phases are largely kind of squeezed into into one. Uh, but if you do look at from the ad to the actual conversion, or you've got a VSL sitting in the middle or some other experience, and you'll see that there's essentially um, a squeeze of, of some sort. But that doesn't mean that everybody comes here. Obviously, people can enter at any possible uh, uh, sort of uh, level or, or, a, or stage, or it's probably a better way to put it, uh, and then before they go through the buying experience. If you're obviously doing um, you know B2B, lead gen type of thing, then they're effectively you're grabbing them here, but then the buying experience is actually taking place. Uh, the considering the buying experience is actually taking place offline via phone conversations and or presentations and those sort of thing, right? So, so it's a it's a it's a broad framework that applies to B two B or B two C. I just wanted to make sure that we kind of understood what the what we're looking at here and uh, sort of how it applies to pretty much uh, everything. Obviously, some stages would be either not relevant and or squeezed in where they would happen quite quite fast. Right, so then comes the sort of like the, the solution part. So what, what do you do at, at each of the phases, right? So if it's a problem thing, what are you gonna do? And so on and so forth. Now, I had an elaborate framework of how to use all this sort of stuff as part of this uh, original training that I did. Uh, but I've uh, since uh, realized after working with many marketers that nobody really likes uh, this sort of complexity. So we're gonna you know narrow it right down and simplify it and make it a little bit easier and thus the uh, market segmentation for dummies or uh, market segmentation for people who are uh, short for time or skills or capability or whatever. So we're going to cross over to uh, our, our presentation here. And I'm, I've basically boiled all of that stuff down to three levels. And this came about as a result of someone reaching out to me. They're about to, they want to run a quiz funnel in, um, in the male testosterone kind of space. Um, so people have lost uh, their mojo, I guess, uh, or the guys are starting to lose their mojo. And so, how do you, you know, get the get your your libido back up, and you know, ED issues and tiredness and all that sort of stuff. So it's uh, going to the core of uh, of what it means to of or what that segment thinks is to be a man. Um, and so that was essentially. So the question was, hey, you know, what do I do here? Do you have an example? And uh, and typically. I get that question at least once a week or in, in the new user calls that I do. Uh, I, I get those calls pretty frequently where people are like, hey, you know, um, um, what's working and what do I use? And I'm often sort of, you know, I, I, yeah, I don't like to say much too much about that. Obviously, I don't want to share what others are working on, firstly. 
But uh, more importantly, that's really a very lazy way of doing marketing because you just want to steal someone's stuff. And then, well, if it stops working, what are you going to do then? And so you really, those people tend to have, uh, you know, sort of feast and famine kind of a funnel. And so I want to want to move the conversation away from there saying, listen, why don't you just think about this at a at a level of abstraction that allows you to sort of pick and choose. And if you are going to get into any market, then usually, obviously, every market is a little bit different. But generally speaking, these three levels of segmentation will normally get you there. So the, the, the thing here would be to create three different funnels. Uh, if you are uh, thinking along those lines, uh, could be obviously one decision tree and you dynamically changing a uh, copy and all that kind of stuff. So uh, leaving all the technical kind of setup aside, you want to have you want to have three converse, three conversations with the market. The first one is a problem conversation, which is you start around the symptoms, right? So what someone is going through. Now this can apply to B two B and or B two C. So um, you know help help you, you understand your problem. So what's the real reason why you've lost your mojo? So here your your copy and your ad would be things along the lines of. Um, you don't want to say, "Hey, your your testosterone gone, you know, through the floor," because uh, no one really knows that. But what they will identify with is, you know, I feel I'm I'm lethargic. I, you know, I, I'm no longer, you know, active with my, you know, or sexually active with my wife or, or whatever. You know, like th those sort of issues that they would resonate with. So you would present uh, the day uh, in the life of, or a miserable life, or an unhappy life of the prospect. And they would identify that, oh, that's actually me, or that looks like it, this is talking to, to me. And that's what I meant by the three conversations that you want to start. So one is around the, the problem. So your ads and stuff and your funnel and your copy and everything will be related to, to that. The second one is, is, a, is a confusion about the solution. Especially in markets like, you know, we're looking at testosterone supplements or whatever, or even, you know, things like solar and whatever. There's so many vendors out there presenting all kinds of, you know, battery and solar combinations. Or if you're looking at the supplement space, there's, you know, I, I mean, you just have to walk into any supplement shop and have, you know, 50,000 freaking tablets staring at you. Uh, that's not even including all the online stuff. So so how do you how do you deal with that? Well, this is where you 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 help them select uh, the solution you can trash your competitors here why normal you know uh, hormone therapy fail why you know you know most people get solar don't get the benefit they were looking for so on and so forth so your conversations would be around that the third segment is the jaded segment uh probably doesn't apply that much to b2 uh b2b uh or could be uh, perhaps where you've uh, bought some large-scale software or, or or you look or you've got some existing solution but you're just really pissed off with it and you've done it multiple times usually b2 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 c's where it would so i've tried to fix my my mojo problem like five times already you know i've taken supplements i've taken injections i've been to the doctor i've been to the chiropractor i've been to the naturopath i've been to whoever all right so i'm a little bit extremely skeptical but it can often be a large segment so if you're going to get into things like you know weight loss or whatever they, they can reasonably be large that doesn't mean that there aren't a fresh uh fresh group of people coming in but there's also a segment there that that has not been able to solve the problem and they could become quite sizable, but they're a little bit jaded. They're, you know, broken promises. So here's why other solutions don't work. So this is where the bulk of the research and the work and the conversation with the market is going to be around uh, the, the mechanism. It could be sort of why this, uh, this old solutions could not and could not or, or did not work for you or could have never worked for you. Because you know, new science has shown blah, and so you in, so you're introducing this new mechanism of understanding uh, either the problem, and then an associated, uh, you know, some uh, some device, uh, you know, mechanism, solution, whatever that addresses that problem. So help me re-understand my problem is the is the primary focus in the jaded market. It is why this old problem was not. So here's the reason why you jaded is because these other things in the past have not worked because they uh, because it was missing this critical element. And this critical element has only been discovered, you know, recently or something or whatever, some reason why it was uh, missed out. And that is, in a nutshell, what the, the three sort of conversations that you want to have. Now, the reason why we're going to start three conversations here is firstly, it becomes much more manageable. But secondly, it tells you uh, what what a type of uh, a prospects that, that are in this case. So let's say, for example, if you're um, if you realize that you're getting a lot of clicks here, then you can see that the, that however you've done the ad and your targeting, because if you change your targeting, you can change everything here. You 
you're, you're seeing that there's a good volume of people that are coming through here. So you can essentially, let's say that's where your early traction is. Then that doesn't mean that these markets are bad. It's just, that's where your early wins are. So let's just double down on that first and capture that market first, and then we can go to these other ones. So, but by setting up three different ones and you're having three, uh, three different conversations with the market, your, 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 your chance of, of, of hitting one or having a conversation with the market that is likely to uh, get you a winner is much more uh, much more likely because you're obviously covering a much larger space uh, or a, or a footprint, if I can put it that way, and and that's that's probably the 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 better way of uh, uh, of of finding yourself a winner than to somehow think there's uh, you know one funnel to rule them all or this this, this singular idea that somehow I'm 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 going to win just with this one, all right? So anyway, hope that sort of uh, breaks it down. Uh, so obviously this, this video is going to be watched by a few people who have asked about this question and uh, hopefully that uh, gives them some more insight as to what are the three conversations that you want to start with in any market. Right. Any questions on this before we move on to just opening it up to any other questions? Nope. Okay. Well, if there's no other questions, we'll, uh, we'll move on to... Uh, yeah, just any um, any Q and A, uh, any issues you've faced recently, uh, anything about your funnel that you want to mention, anything that's uh, that hasn't worked recently. Ross, Jay, anything? Pretty good, thanks, Nick. Cool. Okay. All right. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> applying that solution you told me that was about last week was pretty good though. Airtable oh. stuff. Which one is that? Sorry. The Airtable CRM. Oh yes, 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 yes. Oh, so what did you what did you go with? Uh, we're going the hybrid solution because I needed to keep the long term storage and Airtable yep. stuff to slow down up to like ten thousand records. Oh, it did slow down, did it? Uh, we haven't done it, but we okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's starts to slow down a bit. Yeah, and, yeah it uh, probably will. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's not it's not a a full fledged database. I guess uh, one of the downsides with any of that uh, so any solution that looks very pretty is, is is likely gonna have some compromises that were made so yeah. so yeah so so but but you still but, but you got stuff going into bigquery right yeah so what we'll do we'll have that as the crm and then after it gets processed we'll send it all to bigquery for long-term storage perfect and we really could also help us automate a lot of other processes that the team are doing manually now so yep. perfect it so 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 you went with distribution using Google Sheets, the 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 third uh, version. Airtable, Airtable version. Airtable, okay. okay, Airtable. Okay, cool. There's just right. so much strong for the other stuff you can do with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, 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 absolutely. It does do a, a, a bit more. Cool, and and that worked out. So you you pass the information, it sends you back the buyer's detail and all that kind of stuff. We've done the first part, which is buy detail, and that worked out really well. Okay, um, good. Trusty GPT as my development partner. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, hey, that's uh, that's the way to go. Uh, anyway, just uh, <laughs> on the next call, you'll be blown away by what the, the new stuff that I've been working on. Uh, that's the so that's the reason why we took a bit of a break because I I as I was prompting towards the our last uh, uh, our last call, I was like, oh man, there's so much more in this rabbit hole. I need I need, I need time to go down the rabbit hole first. So anyway, so come out the other side. It's, another six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I might have another one or two weeks to uh, get everything consolidated. Plus, I, I have a I have a funnel to show you guys um, where I'm actually making not just the ads but the entire funnel, and then also did a webinar. And I got uh, anyway, I, I I I got a full fifty slide webinar done. So wow. I'll wow. yeah yeah I'll share I'll share how I did that as well. Oh, wow, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some, yeah, pretty cool. Oh, sorry, there's uh, some questions here in the chat. Let me uh, see what's going on. Uh, could you, yeah, slide number two. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. All right, sorry, Jay, I didn't uh, miss your question. Uh, this slide here or the slide previous to this one from the PowerPoint? Up before, okay, cool. All right. Uh, let me uh, bring that up. All right, so this one here. All right, so this one here. Um, yeah, so so the difference basically is that it's it's a much uh, uh, much stretched out version. And I guess if you if you were to look at what I'm showing in the the shortcut version, is we're looking at essentially the problem, 
solution and uh, and essentially a, a problem solution. And then a, a segment that is sort of sort of kind of like sitting over here where they're kind of like, you know, they're, they're, they're tired of your of the BS. So so it's not that they don't identify the, with the problem or, or the solution. They just identify with the fact that you guys are a bunch of sin. The, the, everybody's a liar and uh, and I'm not finding my answer to my to my problem. Um, and that's what that is. So, so the first row here is essentially what the what what it is from the customer or the prospect perspective, and and the bottom one is is essentially what the solution perspective is. So this is kind of like what we would do to address those problems. So to look at it here, let's say if it's a problem. So so don't know, don't believe, or accept. You would educate, introduce the problem, and then sell the problem. Would be how you would deal with that uh, possible solution. You know, so there are three levels here, which is like I, I don't know that I have a problem. I don't believe I have a problem and I accept that I have a problem. So you want to sell the desired outcome. You want to sell absolution as a, as a, at this level here. If it's uh, searching for, for solutions and you want to implant the buying criteria. So for example, we've got a DT, uh, I think it's gone live where we're saying, um, uh, you know, will, will your, will your quiz, uh, you know, a, a solution scale with your business. And so, uh, or which which uh, which quiz solution should you be, or which lead generation solution should you uh, should you get for your business? And so what we're doing here is we've realized that people realize that they want a quiz or they want some sort of a lead gen solution, and we're identifying for them why they should pick lead soap. So we say, hey, you know what? Does it do server side client side tracking? Does it do this? Does it do that? Oh, cool. Based on your criteria um, that you are looking for, based on the outcome you're looking for from your lead gen solution. Um, this is going to be a, a best fit. But as we were asking the question, we we're actually implanting the buying criteria, right? We're actually giving them how we want them to see the world, how we want them to see the solution space. And so if I give you the buying criteria, then you're you're more likely to, to look at any other solution from that perspective. So I, hey, do you guys do client-side server-side tracking? Oh, you can't. Okay, well, then I possibly can't use you. So it's a, it's a way in which you want to eliminate uh, any competitor solutions or any alternative solutions uh, by giving them a frame of how to view solutions. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, correct. Yeah, so the bottom of the actions you would take and the top is uh, sort of uh, what the customer or the prospect would be looking for. And then obviously you would, uh, you know, you consider your products, you, you know, you buy your, your features, benefits, stuff. And then the buying experience, you know, is uh, is a converting and presenting the offer. So making sure that that's pleasant. And then obviously the usability, make it easy, all that so on and so forth. And then uh, anything on this side here. Uh, to keep them using it. So this is all the LTV stuff. Uh, that's to get them into the product. Cool. Awesome. All right. Now, great. Hope that answered the question. All right. Awesome. Well, Josh, anything, uh, any, any other questions, uh, any follow-up questions on uh, on this? Nothing super pressing, to be honest. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, I guess the next step for you is, uh, is do you continue to use Leadbyte for distribution? Uh, we did it for the other funnel, so it'll be a bit of a process to uh, mix it uh, up, remove it. Mm. But I don't see the necessity. Um, there's other things, other cost savings we can use by having our own solution, like yeah. SMS. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I'll just, just pause because I want to ask you something. I'll just gonna to undo it all. I'm just gonna pause recording here for a second. Resume recording. Oh, cool. All right. Okay. Anyway, we won't talk about that anymore. <laughs> um, so but thanks for sharing. I I had no idea. Wow, okay, cool. All Everyone's right. Gonna go through in January. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's when the new laws come out in the US. Yes. Yeah. Is that is that still does that apply in the UK too? It must because 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 of the GDPR stuff was obviously pushed quite early. Um, obviously, obviously they're not specific around around you. You can't sell to more than one person, but that's effectively what it is because you need to give informed consent. Okay, yeah, sorry, all right, I will pause for a second. All right, fine, I will pause. All right, all right, sorry guys, some secret conversations which have to be kept off the record. Um. So yeah, it's that's a good reason why you want to come live. <laughs> mm -hmm. If anyone watches this. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, well, um, that's good. I'm um well well, yeah, yeah, keep me posted. I'm 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 curious to see uh, what you construct actually on the uh on the distribution side. 
Yeah, it's just different tables. Um, put them together, yeah. works. Yeah. It's, it's actually all the all the stuff is, isn't it? It's just different tables working together. And correct. Yeah, correct. That. Correct. Correct. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. It, it it appears complex when you're starting out, but as you break down the problem. So so for example, like 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 someone on my team this week, like they were like, hey, how how do I build an automation? I know I wanted to do A, B, and C, and all this sort of stuff. And I said, "How do you think you should you should apply? How 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 do you think you should automate this?" And they're like, "Oh, you know, uh, you know, I want to do." And I was like, "No, I said, here's how you want to automate it. You want to get one trigger um, to receive some information, and then another trigger to send something. So, so for example, using you know uh, you know Zapier or whatever, um, fire a webhook to Zapier, and get that webhook to fire uh, another webhook uh, to somewhere else." So you can use something like, you know, webhook.site or whatever, where you can trigger a webhook to uh, the Zapier. And then you want to, from, from Zapier, tr trigger it back to webhook. And so now what you've got is you've got a, a useless automation, but it allows you to complete the cycle, All right? Okay, so now that we've done that, okay, cool. What's the next thing? What do you want it to do? Uh, you, you, you know you, you, you've got a successful automation here. It's useless, but you were able to close the loop. Okay, well, I want it to read my email. Okay, cool. So why don't we uh, attach, uh, you know, an SMTP or whatever to read your email and, um, and connect up, you know, a, a, you know, a, a fake or a, or, a, or a throwaway, you know, Gmail account. And that way there's no other emails going into it. It's only going to be your uh, test email that goes in. And what do you want it to do? Uh, I want it to forward that to, you know, something else, or maybe just fire that original webhook you set up. Okay, great. Let's now add. Let's remove the the the, the webhook. Let's rem, um, you know add uh, you know Gmail. And then when a new email comes in, fire the webhook. Cool. Was that successful? Great. Okay. Cool. Now what do you want to do? Okay. Well, I want it to only fire the uh, do, if if it if it finds this kind of information about it. Okay. Well. All right. So let's let's trigger the word first. Okay. So see the email. Find one word. Let's say I don't know. Um, let's say leads hook. It finds lead zook, it's going to fire the automation. Okay. But it's like, now I want to look at the sentiment now. Okay, cool. So this is where you, now we're going to add in an LLM element where you're going to take the, the email uh, text and all, all the text, you're going to pass it to, to the LLM and the LLM is going to send you back the sentiment. Okay, well, let's set up a new automation. All you're going to do now is send uh, a bunch of text to the LLM and does it come back with the sentiment? Okay, cool. That works. Okay, now plug that in with the email one. So now you've got the email, You've got the sentiment coming back, firing webhook, and so really, that's 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 how they went about it. And so, and 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 similarly, that's exactly what you want to do with what you're trying to do is you really want to break the problem right down to its bare, you know, core. And yes, the very the very first version you create is probably going to be useless and won't do much, but over time, as you are building more and more stuff into it, it becomes really real. But you also know where you fail because that one extra step is being isolated in a very controlled environment. So if you know that the LLM part's not working, then now you know where to address it. Because usually what happens is people can, they put like you know five or six things in an automation, they go, oh, it doesn't work. It's like, well, which part doesn't work? But because they didn't set it up in a way that they broke everything up, it's really, really hard to work out now where the issue is and all of a sudden it's, it ends up becoming in the too hard basket. Um, so that is, uh, I actually thought that was gonna be an obvious decision uh, an obvious thing that this that's how you actually do it but uh subsequently i realize it's that while it's obvious it's not that obvious so um so yeah so as long as you you do it in a piecemeal basis you can pretty much automate anything you want um because you because as soon as you stumble you stumble on a very small step and that's obviously much easier to solve than to build the whole thing and go it doesn't work so i'm finding as we the business matures more we're just automating more and more complex human yeah. tasks yeah yeah I'm just finding out where the where, where where can we get the people doing more things that are more people centric people yeah. correct correct less process less all that sort of stuff yeah and um yeah absolutely yeah that and seems to be that like that uh, yeah because tax weren't doing it now we had to do yeah yeah tax tax well, not to do it. yeah because essentially the the cost of automation is going to go to zero that's essentially what's going to happen. So, so if you're not going to embrace this, um, and and use some version of of um, like that AI component to it, uh, really, it's a massive disadvantage. 
like like so 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 um i'll show you guys next week on actually on the sos call how do you scrape reddit and and uh, and, and quora right because it's got some really gold information in there you can you can quickly so i can take any comment and i can run it through you know any kind of you know prompt or whatever to to find out stuff about it that's not the hard part the hard part is how do you get thousands of comments without spending five hours doing it right and so you got to use you got to scrape but scraping those things isn't that simple but there's a solution out there so what i did this uh, you know the la over the last since since our last call i was manually doing it and i was like ah oh, this is stupid you know i need to automate this <laughs> so so i went down the rabbit hole of all the different uh you know scraping type solutions that are out there i set up five different accounts and you know essentially wasted you know two three days going through all separate ones and working all kinds of nuances and uh, uh, worked out how to scrape both all right so so now you can scrape at scale so if you've got a project rather than spending 10 hours going back and forth you can just give it to the machine and it'll scrape you know 10,000 comments within seven minutes so the question and, uh, is did you use an official product or did you build it out yourself uh, a combination of both okay yeah so okay. so yeah yeah so there was uh, yeah so I'll share a bit bit about that um I wanted to find something that's simple enough because you know I got access to a dev team so I could have done a very techy one and then had had uh, you know you know one of the you know dev set it up for me but that's not really a, a solution that I can share because most people you know won't have that capability so so I've I've gone with a solution that literally anyone can just use in off the shelf stuff and and uh, and get it done but there were some nuances in how you set it up so yeah anyway so that's coming uh, this uh, uh, maybe next week I think is when we'll jump on the call. But but the point was that that once you but that that's a superpower now, right? Like because I don't have to market research now is literally a five minute exercise to try and scrape all the different, uh, for example, Amazon comments, Quora, Reddit, whatever, um, you know, YouTube comments, any of that sort of stuff is is really just a uh, you know twenty thirty bucks uh, for to 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 scrape the whole thing. Uh, thousands of comments you can put it all together get to create uh, you know uh, the, the kind of work we've been doing in persuasion and uh that's gone from could have been hey i'm gonna get someone on 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 uh, on fiverr to do it for me uh which they might deliver in like you know three weeks to i can just you know press a handful of buttons uh and uh you know in about 15 to 20 minutes get get all of it done myself and but the but the reason is that is that if you're not happy with the scrape, which only cost you two or three dollars, you just run another one. And so it gives you a lot more power and control rather than using if you use a third party and they're coming back to you every three weeks. And if the cycle time is, let's say, two or three weeks, you you at some point will like, you know what, forget it. I'll just use whatever you gave me and and not worry about the ideal solution because it's just gonna take too long. Because time is obviously money. So so all this. All this automation type capability just compresses time right down, but it puts you effectively in control where you don't really need to have even a large tech team around you to achieve a lot of these things. It's a little bit technical, so I don't want to you know give the impression that you don't do any technical work, but it's it's not it's not that hard. Yeah, it's it's just a couple of hours of messing around. It's a few false goes to get it right, and uh, once you do that, it's a uh, it's smooth sailing. So I'll be sharing that this week because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a part that I was doing previously manually and then I oh, I'm glad I automated it. Um yeah. So cool. Any other questions any of this sort of stuff automations and or um generic AI. No, that cool. all makes sense. I saw uh, Rory, Rory Sutherland's from uh, Ogilvy start talking about AI market research now is a major thing that'll be getting better. Like that's exactly what we've been talking about. But yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in fact, uh, thanks for sending me the video. I haven't got around to watching it, uh, but uh, but I was curious to hear. Is yeah, so I, I guess w what I've realized, or at least the use case, is um, is that it gives you another like like reference point. Oh, I didn't realize. That I could I could look at the market in this way, and you don't have to accept it. You might be like, oh yeah, no, yeah, I got it wrong. But the point is that it's almost like like somebody else, a, a very high caliber market analyst sitting next to you uh, for twenty bucks a month, telling you, here's another way to look at this problem. And you're like, 
oh yeah, that's an interesting way of looking at it. And that's what I shared in the in the SOS group uh, earlier today about the market segmentation in the life insurance space. Um, that literally blew me away. I was like, whoa, you can do that now? So anyway, so that's part of a super duper prompt, uh, which I'll share uh, you know, on our next call. I just want to refine it, make sure that it works every time. So I got to do some testing with it. Um, but, and so, and that's that's where it's true strength is that is that you can spend more time in ideating different uh, concepts or, or, or different, uh, different uh, ideas about the market and spend less money uh, or spend less time in your scarce uh, resources, i.e. time and capital, in testing it out on, and then go, oh, that bombed. So, so because, because, you're, because you're better off spending, you know, in, in, in my case, you know, to 15 minutes uh, to, to pull out that, that, that work or whatever, it, five minutes, I guess, to pull out all that, all that analysis and then to validate that and go, okay, that makes sense. Okay, cool, now let's get to the market. Because, because it would take you, you know, a few thousand dollars in ad spend to reach the same conclusion, which you can reach in five minutes with no ad spend. That's that's the that's the real value here of this whole thing. You don't have to, yeah, and 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 the point is, you know, and I think I've made that enough times in the course is 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 to to not accept any of that as the truth. It's just a version of it, but it always gives you like this perspective that you never thought of. It's like, oh wow, okay, that's an interesting way to look at it. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll share with you guys some pretty advanced uh, segmentation prompting techniques. So very uh, on the next call. Yeah, done. All right, guys, if there is uh, no more questions or comments, we'll uh, end it today. Uh, same time, same place. That's it, Dick. Thank you. Um, Thank yeah. You. All right. And I'll, and I'll post uh, our time for the next uh, uh, SOS call and looking forward to sharing the, the second part of this whole thing. Awesome. All right. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good evening. Thanks.